Hello and welcome back to Lorcana Villain. My name is Baker and today we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of new card reveals from the upcoming Lorcana set, Ursula's Return. We've already um, seen a few that have been revealed over the last couple of weeks and card reveal season has been a bit slow starting um, for set four, which I, I, I actually quite like, give us longer with the previous set. Um, but yeah, it is now in full swing. We've had quite a few cards drop over the last couple of days and I was actually in the middle of... I've recorded my um, first video covering Stitch winning deck lists over the set championships and I was halfway through editing that and then I saw these latest card reveals and normally I would have waited. I want, I want to get those Stitch videos um, out. But revealed with the new cards, we have a whole new mechanic, a new way of shifting characters, which is pretty huge. So I've put everything on pause to come and review these cards. Let's jump straight in and take a look. And if you're looking for Lorcana singles, then check out Card Market for all your trading card game needs. And we are starting off with one of my absolute favourites and, and a definite contender for one of my best um, favourite arts in the game. Give me this Enchanted. Just fine, give it... I know I won't be prepared as an Enchanted, but just look at this. Absolutely stunning. Be king undisputed, respected, saluted, and seen for the wonder I am. Yes, my teeth and ambitions are bared. Be prepared. <laughs> Ruby getting some more control. We've got a forecast uninkable song. A character with four or more can exert the sing for free. Each opponent chooses and banishes one of their characters. So really like this. Um, immediate similarities to cards like Lady Tremaine that are going to get around the ward keyword because the opponent chooses. Obviously it also comes with that same detriment of Lady Tremaine that obviously if they're choosing they could have another character that they could choose to get rid of which isn't as much value. But as we've seen with Lady Tremaine, it's far from uncommon for her to only have one target or for you to be able to manipulate the board in a way where you get your one target. So that's still good as far as I'm concerned. Um, so yeah, it's a banish for it, it, it's pay for to banish or we can sing it which obviously makes this exceedingly better. Now we have to level ourselves to a degree and remember that as it stands, of course, with the new set, we don't know what changes there's going to be. But as it is, Emerald is a very dominant colour. Um, Ursa Deceiver really putting in a lot of work. I get that's the ice cream man. That's the first time I've heard the ice cream man since we moved. <laughs> you probably can't even hear it. I probably didn't even need to say that. But, yo, I should, I should stop and go get ice cream. But, yes, um, we already... Uh, kind of worry when we play into Emerald because obviously their Ursa Deceiver can, get, Deceiver can get a lot of value. As it stands, um, traditional Ruby Amethyst control decks, because I, I, if you look at a Ruby card, I think it's safest immediately to make the comparison of like the Ruby Amethyst build. Obviously, you can talk about it with Amber and there's and and, um, and Sapphire, but that's the first one that I think is going to come to mind for everybody. Um, and at the moment, those decks are running four B prep and four um, friends on the other side. Some have gone down to three B prep and three or four friends. You see some that are running Teeth and Ambitions, but you can get that out of your hand fairly quickly especially if you're on the play um then you put down a character turn one preferably a one three and then turn two um even though you're not singing then you can play your teeth and ambitions before the opponent gets a chance to snipe it and sometimes teeth just people find necessary just because of the amount of things like curse merfolk and flynn etc etc so we can get it out of our hand quite quickly but with this we're not going to be able to play it until at least our turn five if we want to sing it. Turn four if we're happy to hard cast it, which may be fine some of the time. But really, you want to be singing this with Merlin Rabbits. I really like it. Um, I don't, I'm not certain it's an insta ad just because, again, Ruby, we, Ruby Amethyst needs to be careful about how many songs it's playing in general. Um, I mean, you can just high roll and just say, hey, just hope for the best. Especially if Emerald becomes not as good in the next set which i don't see happening we've already seen a couple of quite good emerald cards and a couple more to look at in this set overall i think this is probably i think with early testing this is probably best as a zero to two count i think some decks you just won't play it at all you'll be too scared of the emerald and and, and amber of course has bare necessities um so i'm not sure how much Ruby Amethyst decks want to play this, running it against the risk of it just being another card that we could easily lose early. But 
It's strong. The fact we can sing it with our rabbits. Um, and yeah, again, gets round ward and it's just another control card. I don't know. I love the art. I love the fit. I, lo I love this card, but I'm not convinced it immediately finds its way into like all Ruby Amethyst decks. It probably starts off as a zero to two count and then it will settle probably on the zero to one count end, I think, unless the meta develops in a way where this specific card is important enough to answer the meta, whatever is relevant on the turn to four or five um, point of, of, of turns. If, the, if, it, if it turns out that this card is really relevant to take out something that's like really a dominating deck, then there's every chance that this finds its way into be able to deal with specific threats. I think this is probably a meta response more than it is a auto include. Um, but it's really cool. I'll definitely be trying it out day one, probably just at, at one count. Um, again, like I said, you want to be careful with how many songs you're playing into probably still quite a heavy emerald meta but love the card love the theming brilliant let's move straight on to one of the newer ones which embodies what i said right at the beginning the reason i've rushed to suddenly do this card review uh which is the the new shift mechanic and we have a few cards that uh take advantage of this so we've got flotsam and jetsam entangling eels up Artwork appreciation, Mwah, this is stunning. Six cost inkable, five, five, quest for two. Um, and yeah, you shift it by discarding two cards. So this is the new the new cool trick of Ursa's Return. We have ways of shifting characters and we don't have to pay any ink to do so. Um, shifting cards is already a really important part of the game. Um, it's something that's like, if you listen to people like Zach Bivens, who you should listen to, because they've got a lot of very good opinions and things to say, um, they will remind you about, hey, remember when you're shifting, you are minus one yourself a card. Sometimes that's fine, but it's always worth bearing in mind that shifting isn't always the best thing in the world, but a lot of decks have shown that they can really take advantage of it just to be able to get to higher char um, characters of higher level that can sing songs like Whole New World, Grab Your Swords, things like this. So straight away, it's worth mentioning this is a way that we can shift for six, so if and when we get notable six cost songs that could be a thing that we want to take advantage of but yeah just the concept of being able to um, shift characters now without having to pay ink is going to be game changing it is going to warp our meta um, we need to see the full list of new cards and get some testing done before we see the full extent of that but I do think this is going to really be impactful and yeah all the we've got more to look at who can shift um, by it's all by discarding cards they've all got a different kind of card that they need to be discarded to be able to shift worth bearing in mind straight away that Prince John's going to have an absolute field day with decks that do end up taking advantage of this because you're discarding a card so you're prompting him to, um, to, to, to allow his player to draw cards and then just in general the fact that we are discarding cards we're, we're minusing two I said a moment ago like just shifting we are going minus one in card count because the character that we shifted on to now is that is not there anymore but we're doing that and we're discarding a card so this is quite a heavy cost so there needs to be a real payoff for this um so maybe i'm premature in saying i feel like it's going to warp our warp our meta but i just think instinctively something like this it's there's it won't be every deck but it will find its place and there'll be a way of really taking advantage of this cheese i think especially in whole new world based decks because we don't care about discarding our cards because we just want to get a big character on to play the wheel anyway um so i definitely think there's going to be a place for it but yeah this um an interesting thing about this card as well specifically this character counts as being named both flotsam and jetsam now we have four different flotsam and jetsam cards at the moment two in amethyst and two in emerald so worth bearing in mind, theoretically, if we get one of these Emerald Flotsam or Jetsams down on turn three, then we can immediately, or the next turn, whatever's more convenient, uh, discard two cards to shift the Flotsam and Jetsam new card on top of them, and then we're singing six cost songs if we want to be, or five cost songs, which is the more... Um, relevant number at the moment so that's definitely worth bearing in mind but also flotsam and jetsam are really unique in they they have all of their cards give um special abilities to the other of the two so because our new card is called flotsam and jetsam and counts as having both the names if you get that combo card down the tag team i'll call it for now that's very pokemon and very wrestling that plays into both of my into both of my main interests so yeah if we if we have the tag team uh, on the board then putting down these other flotsam and jetsams that give abilities like rush evasive plus three strength and ward that uh, they're, they're all going to be relevant to the flotsam and jetsam card so i think that's really cool um i don't want to make a bet yet on how good i think this specific one is going to be i think the mechanic in general is going to be 
be strong. It's probably going to be strongest in select inks and select uh, deck combinations, but it's really exciting. Um, I love this artwork. And again, just the fact that this card can benefit from all those different keyword um, abilities from the baby Flotsam and Jetsams is really cool. So definitely something I'll want to try out, even if it is just a fun deck. So yeah, love it. Let's do all the cards that have the new shift mechanic built into them to start off with. Our next card is Diablo, Devot Devoted Herald. Look at this art. Absolutely stunning. I'm, in I'm so in love with this game. Like, right? I'm so in love with this game. And artwork appreciation. Mm. Three cost, uninkable, two, two, quest for one. We can shift this Diablo on top of a baby Diablo, of which we only have one, the Amethyst one, which is a one or a two cost? It's a one cost. So turn one, play Diablo, discard an action, play this Diablo, and then turn two, we can sing three cost songs. Don't know how relevant that is in um, green purple, but hey, it's a thing. But yeah, uh, this guy needs to discard an action card to be able to do this shift. He has evasive and circle far and wide. During each opponent's turn, whenever they draw a card while this character is exerted, you may draw a card. It's cool. The art is good. Um, it folds on its knees to steel. It's 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 not. It's got not got enough willpower, I'm afraid. And this ability is probably just a bit too circumstantial. I mean, like yeah, in situations where you have this exerted and then they play whole new world, friends on the other side, all this thing, all, all those all those sort of cards, um, or bounce a rabbit and then bounce it. Then yeah, you're drawing off each one, but the odds are they are taking this out somehow before they do so. Um, and even if they're not a steel deck um even if this started be to become good then those decks would just make sure it has an evasive answer that can hit for two so it's a legendary um i don't know if it deserved legendary you know the art does absolutely i don't think this is going to be great um i hope to be wrong because i would love an excuse to see this in competitive play uh but yeah love the art and yeah i hope i'm wrong about i don't think this is great i think like maybe just the the shift i don't know i don't think it's enough and I think this ability is too easily circumvented. Plus, it's situational anyway. What if they're not doing a lot of drawing? Um, don't know. I, I'm not a believer straight away, but again, cool up. Next up for Ruby, we have Li Shang. Is it Valorous General? Um, three cost inkable, artwork appreciation. Uh, I, we've, we've got to be getting Shang Yu, the villain from Mulan in this set. We've got to be with all these Mulan, Mulan cards we've been getting. But three, two stat line, quest for one. And his way of shifting is to discard a character card. And then we can play it on top of our another character called Li Shang, of which we currently have... Um, oh no, we do have one. We have the steel one that gives evasive to his own characters when he quests. Yeah, exactly right. And he's a fee, uh, five. Yeah, exactly right. And he's a five cost. So I don't know if you would be wanting to do that, but you've got to assume we're going to get a one cost uh, Li Shang. But the ability lead the charge. Your characters with four strength or more get plus one law. So in Ruby Amethyst, the cards that would be relevant for that are Scar, uh, Maleficent, uh, Medusa. Jim Hawkins is an interesting one. Yzma, Fox, and Goat. They're the main ones that I can see and think of off the top of my head. Which isn't insignificant. Um, and the fact that he, you, there's no condition. He doesn't need to be exerted or anything just while he's on the board. So you could definitely um, surprise your opponent with this by if you've got two characters of four strength. Um, but previously maybe we were only questing for one or two like for a couple of them like Yzma and Jim Hawkins. Um, just putting this down. That sudden boost. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, I... I don't want to write him off, nor do I want to fully commit. I, th I think he's interesting. I think the fact that we can do this and so maybe potentially just get a win um, out of nowhere from questing, um, depending on how big our board is. I'm not sure it's good enough. It's an interesting ability for sure. Something to at least try. Um, I don't know if he would settle. I think he. I feel like he might be fit. Like, uh, end up being a bit like you think of things like Sheer Khan um, that just ended up just not really being good enough. Um, I don't know, but certainly interesting. Next up for Sapphire, we got Olaf, Carrot Enthusiast. Love it. Three cost inkable, one four, uh, quest for two, and he can shift by discarding an item card. Obviously, we have the Amethyst Olaf. 
which is a one cost. That is our only Olaf at the moment. So that's the only thing that he could uh, shift on to. So if you're playing Amethyst Sapphire, then you're going to have yourself a wonderful time with some Olafs. And carrots all round. Whenever he quests, each of your other characters gets strength equal to this character strength this turn, which at the moment is one. Obviously, we could we could increase that. Um, we could find ways to make him stronger and then have him quest and then maybe he's giving a significant bump to everything else. Um, I don't think it's hugely relevant at the moment. I think if it ever became relevant, it would be just from the uh, us being able to, on turn two, just shift it on top of our one cost Olaf and then maybe sing a three cost song. Maybe that ends up being relevant at some point. Um, as it stands at the moment, I don't think this is strong enough, but cool card. Next up, what a beauty. We've got Ursula, Eric's Bride. Four cost uninkable and Amber card. Four cost uninkable, two, four, quest for two. Floodborne villain, princess, sorcerer. Um, the way we shift this character is by discarding a song card to play on top of one of our Ursulas. At the moment, obviously, Emerald has uh, two Ursas, the two drop and the three drop. And Amethyst has the seven drop and a three drop, an uninkable one. You've got to imagine we're going to get another Ursula, um, at least at some point, that's cheaper than this. But yes, uh, Vanessa's design, whenever this character quests, chosen opponent reveals their hand and discards a non-character card of your choice. So it's a bare necessities on a body, which is really good. 2-4 um, is a perfectly respectable stat line, questing for two. If we get an Ursula cheap enough that is in the right I mean, is in the right color um I don't know what the right color is like I it would need to be amber really I think um but yeah I, this this is interesting especially if we can shift it on top of a cheap Ursula and then immediately quest um assuming the previous Ursula uh, Ursula's ink is dry and then just have a free bare necessities and yeah I think this is pretty interesting and this could absolutely come up and it's just great to see the uh, Ursula's human form love to see it and now the last of our new cards as it stands. And now the last of our cards at the moment which have this new way of shifting. We have Aladdin, Brave Rescuer. This art is amazing. I love this depiction of Aladdin. Mwah, beautiful. Three cost inkable, three, three, quest for two. Um, our unique shift condition is to, to discard a location card, which is a little um, off the bat, a little harder to meet just because there are less location cards and there are less played at the moment. But hey, they're gonna, they're, they're gonna get stronger and stronger. This being in steel where John Silver lives definitely helps. Um, so yeah, you love to see it and then the ability crashing through whenever this character quests you may banish chosen item that's pretty cool um steel already has item removal well, has the only item no blue has item removal as well but I i'm green steel has the best item removal i think we could agree at least on that <laughs> maybe not someone's gonna be like nah man wildcat all, the all about the wildcat <laughs> or some people will be like nah man judy hops is diverse whatever steel can discard items already banish them but this is another way of doing it um just the name aladdin you've got to think bears a lot of weight like i know at the moment we've got a couple of like really bad supporting aladdin cards um from chapter one which have obviously never seen played uh, seen play but aladdin's such a core character I, I you've got to think as time goes on there's going to be more cards that specifically buff him like we've seen a lot of peter pan and peter pan buffs recently even though he still doesn't really get played but he's gotten a lot of support um, and that support's got to get better for these characters as time goes on. Yeah, I've got to imagine Aladdin is a big enough name that just having the Aladdin name is going to be relevant. Um, and yeah, being able to, to banish items is pretty cool. So yeah, love to see it. All right, that's all the cards we have at the moment that have that unique shift ability. So we've got a few more to look through. Um, we've got Brawl for Ruby, three cost inkable action, banish chosen character with two strength or less. I mean, uh, like there's targets for this. Flavisham is one straight off the bat. Merlin Rabbit, Baby Robin Hood, Benja, the aggro stuff like Maleficent and Pinocchio, Bodyguard Prince, Blue Fairy, Rafiki, Merfolk, Flynn Rider, Ursa Deceiver and Ursa the Deceiver of All, Evasive Tinkerbell, Doc, Ariel, Stylish Surfer Mini is a big one, Arthur, Bell. Yeah, I could keep looking and I'm sure I'd, I'd find more, but already that's quite a lot of um, significant targets. Um, and it's not a song, which is good. 
Um, yeah, maybe. And not to mention, um, if you're playing with Amber and the Queen, then you can manipulate strength that way and um, and do it. That's kind of the opposite of the world's greatest criminal mind. Um, yeah, interesting. This could absolutely have a place. Next up for Sapphire, we've got Flounder, Collector's Companion. Shout out to the citizens of Lorcano. I'm sure are very pleased with this. I'm sure you'll get your Flounder reveal. You, like, it's got to happen. Less than, they're going to give you the Floodborne, my guy. Three, uh, three cost Ingable, two, two, quest for two. Support, so we give our strength to another character of request and I'm not a guppy if you have a character named Ariel in play you pay one less ink to play this character um yeah it's not good enough at the moment uh, I imagine one day uh, we'll get an Ariel who like gets crazy buffs from the amount of flounders on the board so maybe then there's a there's a world for that you've got to imagine there's going to be some sort of synergy there like and already just seeing this ability, it's the first thing it made me think. Like, okay, we're going to get some sort of aerial who gets extra lore for every flounder on the board or something. Um, so, yeah, it could have a place maybe in fun to maybe competitive decks. Depends how good that, that synergy is. Not good enough at the moment, but a lot of fun and just nice to have another flounder. Next up for Emerald, we have Gunter, greatest intercontinental champion of all time. Four cost, Ingable, three, three, quest for two. And Sad-Eyed Puppy, Whenever, uh, when this character is challenged and banished, each opponent chooses one of their characters and returns it to their hand. Yeah, it's all right. Um, questing for two is nice. I don't know if it's a bit too expensive. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's good enough um, for high competitive play right away. Um, no, I wouldn't bank too much on this card. But quest for two, yeah, I don't know if that's good enough. Yeah, I don't think this is good enough, but good to see Gunter. Next up, we've got Hercules, Clumsy Kid. Three cost, uninkable, three, three, quest for one, and Rush. This is a direct upgrade from Chapter One, Peter Pan. But it's worth mentioning, this isn't power creep the way that it might be in other games because names of characters matter depending on depending on the floodboard options and depending on the cards that specifically synergize with peter pan or hercules peter pan rush one could still end up being better question mark but as it stands right now this is a clear upgrade um yeah it's it's Ruby Amethyst, if it wants to play this, it's probably already playing Rafiki, which it's not really. Um, again, the meta could develop in the next set where this becomes more relevant. But yeah, I don't think anything special to say other than fantastic art. And I know Zach Bivens will be very pleased to see another Hercules. So very good. Next up for Amber, we've got Lost in the Woods. Four cost inkable song. All opposing characters get minus two strength into the start of your next turn. So it being into the start of your next turn is an upgrade to a lot of these effects, which are generated just for that turn. Um, straight away, I don't think this is good enough. Um, even if you're ju if you just want songs, then there's probably cheaper ones that also include a draw card effect, like painting the roses red. Um, I don't see this math straight away mattering. It could as a meta response, but I don't have high hopes straight away. Next up, we've got a new Magic Broom, Aerial Cleaner, two cost inkable, two, three, uh, quest for one, and winged for a day. During your turn, this character gains evasive. Um, another Magic Broom is cool. I think the community all wants brooms to be good. Or to at least be playable um, at a semi-competitive level. Uh, and I am one of the... I am people. Hi, I am people. Um, great art. Love the, seeing the lamp in this. And this is the... the uh, it's the show necklace. Um, I don't think it's good enough. Um, obviously, like, if you're running a broom deck, then it's fine. But... Jafar is right there, who has the 3 2 stat line, and hitting, like, hitting 3, I think, is more important immediately for the Stylish Surfer Mini. Again, maybe there comes a point where you don't see as many of her, and maybe 2 is fine to hit as an evasive number. Um, but straight away, I, I don't see it being significant. It spends its days keeping the treasured, gl treasured glimmers in the Hall of Lorcana sparkling clean. We thank you for your work, Magic Room. Next up, we've got Mystical Rose for Amethyst, a two-cost inkable item, and Dispel the Entanglement. Banish this item. Chosen character named Beast gets plus two lore this turn. If you have a character named Bell in play, move up to three damage counters from chosen character to chosen opposing character. So it reminds me of the lamp where um, if you've got a Jafar in play, you draw two cards, and if you've got a Genie in play, then you bounce a character back to their hand. Um, and if you have both, then you can do both. 
So, and this is exactly the same if you have name uh, characters of both those names. Um, I don't think the bell part of the effect is very relevant. Um, the beast part of the effect, however, I don't think is hugely relevant in any deck other than Emerald for the Relentless Beast. Because now suddenly if we're questing for four and then re-readying and um, questing again in the same turn, suddenly that becomes kind of mad. Um, obviously though, if you're doing that, then you're playing Emerald with Amethyst and Relentless Beast ended up not being great, but the success it did have, I think was very largely due to the fact that it could pair with Steel to get that effect going. Um, I don't think Purple Green has a lot of ways of doing that, but it's certainly interesting, like the idea of that Beast Relentless questing for four. And I just love the card, uh, love the theming. So yeah, love to see it. Yes, I know it's true that visions are seldom what they seem. Beautiful art, a really classic Disney moment. One of the earliest ones that I remember seeing. Obviously, I'm as we all know, I'm much more into the villains, but I can't deny this is quite a legendary just portrait to look at. So, yeah, love to see it. Two cost inkable song. Chosen character gets minus three strength this turn. I mean, the best chance for this ever being relevant is if it's to do with your setting up to play that ruby card that we looked at a minute ago that i've already forgotten the name of where they have to have three strength or less um or similar cards where them having a low strength allows us to play an insta removal card or just a strong action of some description um yeah i don't think this is immediately relevant but again beautiful art Next up for Amber, we've got Sign the Scroll. Three cost uninkable. Each opponent may choose and discard a card. For each opponent who doesn't, you gain two lore. It's interesting. I'm not sure it's good enough, especially as an uninkable. Even if this was inkable, I don't know how much I would love this. Because um, a just discard one isn't great. Although, if you're playing with Emerald, of course, then you can be doing it with Prince John. Um, but the one for one isn't amazing. Like, even in Emerald, Hypnotize lets you draw a card and Sudden Chill can be sung. So that doesn't sound amazing to me. Um, and if obviously if they choose not to, then you can gain two lore. I think that sounds a little better. If they don't want to discard the card, then you just gain two. If you're looking at like an Amber Amethyst, just hyper aggro deck, then maybe, but I doubt it being un uh, uninkable. But love the, I love the Ursula theme cards, great art. And straight onto another Ursula theme card with some great art. We've got Emerald's Signed Contract, two cost inkable item, and fine print. Whenever an opponent plays a song, you may draw a card. I think this is quite cool. I mean, if you think, especially if you're playing against like Steel Amber songs, especially flute builds that play so many songs, the whole new world, the Let the Storm Rage On, the Strength of a Raging Fire, uh, Bare Necessities, list goes on. And you really slow them down. The problem is, if this ever became good enough, then that deck just falls off. And then the other decks, like Ruby Amethyst and Friends, start to just do even better. And they don't have Steel Amber songs in the meta to compete with. Um, I don't know. Like, obviously, yeah, if they are playing a lot of songs, then you will start to get value from this. Um, but it's quite, a, again, Emerald tends to want to do more of its turn two. Either it's a Deceiver or it's a Flynn. I, don't, I just don't know how well it synergizes with what the deck's already trying to do. Um, because these first few turns for Emerald and whatever it's paired with are often quite important to get out things that are going to do more than just sit there and hope our opponent plays a song. Like, if you put this down against Ruby Amethyst on turn two, they're more than happy with that, that you didn't play Deceiver or you didn't play Flynn or something like that. And then, okay, I'm, I'm just not going to play my friends on the other side straight away. I'll ink that and I'll depend on my Maleficence and my Rabbits. And then when we get to the Be Prepared turn, I'm like, okay, fine, draw a card because I wiped the board. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I do that a lot. I immediately think of how it plays into Ruby Amethyst, but I think you kind of have to. <laughs> like, just to like, because if it can't compete with that, I don't know how well it can compete in general, but I say all this, hey, maybe set four is the set where RA falls off completely. Um, I think it's interesting. Um, I'm not sure it's good enough. Next up at Emerald, we've got Tor Florist, five cost inkable, four, seven, quest for one. Just for nothing to say really here other than he's out of range of Medusa and along came Zeus. So maybe that's nice. Um, I don't see a scene play. Duh, 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 duh. 
Da, 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 da. We are the muses. Welcome, ladies. You go, girls. I so could have been that deep voice narrator at the beginning of Hercules. I so could have done it. Uh, we got a the pre the proclaimer of heroes. Are oh, these girls? They got me all a flutter. They've got your boy a flutter. Forecast Ingable two four quest for one ward, which is always great. And and that's the gospel truth. Whenever you play a song, you may return chosen character with two strength or more or less. To their player's hand. I think this is really good. Um, I immediately just want to bounce my own rabbit. That's all I want to do. I want to get the muses down and just bounce my rabbit back and forth. Um, again, we already see from Kit Cloud Kicker, who's a three cost that bounces two strength or less. Um, obviously, this is a uh, like turn. You put this down on turn four, but then you could immediately play a sing a song with one of your one or two or three drops and immediately get value from this. Um, the two four line is interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't write her off, especially with the ward. Um, I say I say her, them, these lovely ladies. Uh, yeah, interesting card. Treasures untold, how many wonders can one cavern hold? Great song, classic. Uh, we've got Sapphire's Treasures Untold, a six cost inkable. Um, return up to two item cards from your discard into your hand. I think this is one of our first six cost songs, if not our first. Yep, unless there's a six cost song that's already been revealed in this set that I'm forgetting about. Um, we don't already have any, so all those characters that shift six... You've got something maybe to take advantage of. Um, returning items from our discard to our hand. I mean, hey, if we're discarding them, um, either because we're playing against Emerald, this safeguards us a bit. We know we can discard them and get them back fairly easily, even if they just become ink. There was the Olaf that we looked at not too long ago who needs us to discard an item to shift him on. And you've got to imagine that we'll get more that, like, will fill all these requirements. We'll get another one that needs to discard an item, another one that needs to discard a song, an action, etc. Hopefully in this set, I'd like to see at least one more of each of those um, required types. Not to mention we can recycle our Porpsicles. There's obviously, we're in Sapphire, so Flavisham is throwing items into the bin. So that's, that, 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 that this actually sounds kind of interesting. Um, immediately off the bat, really, if we can sing this and then get back items that we need to then draw off of Flavisham. Yeah, it's okay. Um, it's not an immediate, oh yeah, this is, this definitely gets added to Sapphire decks. Um, but potentially there's definitely going to be some testing there and another beautiful artwork. Right, last two cards, which are both locations. First of all, for Ruby, we have the Snuggly Duckling, Disreputable Pub. Uh, two cost inkable, two to move there, nine willpower, no passive law gain, and routine ruckus. Whenever a character with three strength or more challenges another character while here, gain one law. If the challenging character has six strength or more, gain three law instead. So this means you have a character at this location who is challenging an opposing character. And if you have three strength or more, you're going to immediately gain one law. And if you have six strength or more, then we're gaining three. So obviously the immediate, immediate synergy that you think of the, the, with this is Maui, especially when you add Rush on top of that, that we can do this straight away. Um, we also see Scar. And I'm pretty sure, I probably should have checked this before I said it in a public setting, because I'm sure people will tell me if I'm wrong. Um, but I think if you've got Challenger, like if you've been, you've been given challenger by crab or something then you are the challenging character and you have six you have that strength so i'm pretty sure that pops it as well i may be wrong there look to the comments they either said i was right or, or, or i was wrong but yeah it's interesting because this is something that you could put down on turn two and it's not necessarily immediately going to garner a response from the opponent um, it might, to be fair, because again, from turn three, assuming we played a one drop, then we have access to Madame in Fox. And again, there are one drops that can have three strength, like Felicia and Rafiki, if having Challenger works. But yeah, the fact that there's no passive law gain, they may be less inclined to deal with it immediately. And if that's the case, then maybe you do generate a bunch of advantage from this on your turns five, six, or seven, if you can suddenly get a couple of characters with six strength or more challenging and give you a big law bump. Um, and if they do respect it immediately and start taking it out, then they're, they're exerting their characters, um, which hopefully, especially if you're against things like Rafikis and Hooks, who obviously do more when challenging and then challenging into them against Rafiki does nothing and Hook is only one. And that's not going to be good for them if we're taking out their characters for free. Yeah, I think this is definitely interesting and one that we'll see some playtesting.
And our last card to look at for Emerald, a location, we have Ursula's Garden, full of the unfortunate. Mwah, love this. Four cost inkable, two to move there, seven willpower, one passive law gain, and abandon hope. While you have an exerted character here, opposing characters get minus one law. So it's certainly interesting, especially if you think, if we look, if we think we're EA versus EA tempo, um, just a lot of aggro characters. Then getting this down and then being able to move some characters here just means our opponent suddenly has to be the one to go on the offensive, which they have some, they're like they have boxes and things like that if they're EA tempo. Um, but it's not the bulk of what their deck's really trying to do. Suddenly all their characters that are just there to quest aren't doing anything and they have to respond to this. And seven willpower is quite a lot to get through. The one passive law gain. I like it, but the two to move there I think is probably going to end up being too slow. Um, again, we have things like Jim that can rush this in and move there straight away and you only need one exerted character there um of course emerald also has i will find my way who could, which can move characters here for free um and there's cards like the hyena who benefits from being at a location so interesting i think it's probably going to verge more on the fun side i don't see it being competitive straight away but again this could all change after i see more of the set and like we could get more good ways of moving characters locations cheaper so we'll see it's definitely an interesting one and i love the art and as it stands, those are all the new card reveals. I just did another Twitter check. There's been nothing else revealed. I imagine later on when I'm editing this, there'll be even more that I'll end up missing. But I think that's a nice chunk. And yeah, really um, just sprung on us out of nowhere. Like an RKO. My man Ra Ravensburger doing their Randy Orton impression. Just out of nowhere gave us a new shift. Um, a, way, a new way of shifting that was not teased at all. Not as far as I can tell. So that's really cool. Love love the, the development of the game. There's some interesting cards here. I think that um, the King Undisputed is one of the more interesting ones. Flotsam and Jetsam, I think, is really like just because not just because of its way of shifting quick, um, but the fact that it benefits from those Flotsam and Jetsams. It's probably still more fun than anything else. Um, Li Shang, I think, could be really interesting. The boost that it can give to our questing characters, um, but nothing too mad from this set of reveals. I still think previous cards we've had reveals. Um, are better mostly the steel aerial that i think that's the most powerful card we've had revealed or that to be fair the ruby goofy and the ruby mulan both look um, really strong as well but just another just great to see more cards of the cards we looked at today what are you most excited for what did i overhype what did i underhype and how do you feel about the new shift mechanic but yeah that's going to be it for me for now just last note i want to say um very hopefully soon after this video i'll release my first set of stitch deck reviews i had so many people send me their list and i'm very very thankful for that the way it's working out is i'm going to do a few of these videos the first one that i've done only looks at four different ink combinations it doesn't look at everything but as soon as that video comes out i will look to within 24 hours have my next one out which will look at more it's going to be in in chunks i'm trying to get them going to try and get them out as quickly as i can but yeah just as a heads up when you see your first First, let's look at stitch deck reviews um, video it's only going to be four in combinations that we look at look at in that video and then hopefully the next day I'll have the rest but yeah that's pretty much it from me for now thank you so much for watching if you're brand new to the channel please subscribe for all things Lorcana hit the like button to show your support and we'll see you soon